Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, one last one here for this go-around. This one also very heavily suggested. Um, it remains one of the most suggested ones that I haven't gotten around to this particular set of videos. So, I like this particular series this time because pretty much all I did was I'll, uh, I just selected some of the most requested ones that I never really talked about in the past. And so this was a nice way to try to say thank you to all my fans out there about your suggestions and about your continued support so thank you so much again for that and again this one absolutely heavily suggested I just never really got around to it only because it seemed like a little silly to me to think that that there could be something like this existing but after reading more information about it um, my ideas of it being like some kind of kooky Austin Power type villain no instead it's actually quite fascinating the encounters that people have had there's three of them that stand out uh, that to this day are still told around here in the US and around some of the cryptid communities so very very fascinating stuff I'm talking about the cryptid known as the Loveland Frogman or in some cases Frogmen depending on the encounters that people have had so it's it's one of those things where it's a cryptid that's here well known in the US not really so much let's say in other parts of the world but it definitely has its own lore here uh, what's fascinating too to note is that these creatures whatever they are they haven't really been encou encountered after their experience the last known sighting was a couple of decades back so if anyone let, let's say later on has any more information they'd like to share about other encounters that would be really great to hear so what are the Loveland frogmen well basically they're a set of unique amphibious creatures that were discovered sometime in the 1950s up until the 1970s there's three distinct occasions that occurred for this and it occurred actually at a place in a town called Loveland Ohio hence the name the Loveland Frogmen and what they were was each encounter involved one person coming across them and it looks like the occasions are all the same um, these frog men were essentially minding their own business when people would come across them and their encounters were just minutes at most and it always ended with the frogmen essentially leaving away and making sure that they were not to be sighted later on. So these are absolutely very secretive cryptids. Uh, they do not like human encounters. They want to make sure that nothing really bothers them. So if they're still out there in this world, they've been doing a really good job of staying scarce. So first let's talk about what are they exactly. Um, well basically they're giant frogs. Um, they're giant bipedal frogs that just think of your average frog but multiply it in size specifically to the size of almost a human being um, fully standing they've been noted as being around three or four feet tall but they have the same distinct characteristics as your average frog they have the green leathery skin they have the webbed hands they have the frog like heads um, they have distinct like wrinkles um, within certain parts of their bodies um, they have the like the hands themselves have that distinct uh, I don't know what you call it but it's that distinct like membrane or skin in between each of their uh, mandibles of their fingers um, think of it like if you like a ninja turtle um, all it is is like a giant turtle of some sort same concept here is just a giant frog so if you think of that and uh, let's say um, with each encounter that I'm about to describe then you'll get an idea essentially of what these people were meeting now the very very first encounter goes back to 1955 so quite a little ways back over 50 years or so and this is what happened um, it happened in the dead of night around 3:30 a.m. there was a businessman whose name still to this day remains anonymous but he 
it has the fortune of being the very first person encountering these frog men. Um, his is also very notable because his is the only case, I believe, where he he saw multiple of these frog men rather than just one altogether. So here's what happened. Um, there he was. Uh, he was driving alongside some kind of road there near Loveland, Ohio. And as he was doing so in the dead of night, that's when he saw what what he looked like, like three things uh, essentially on the side of the road. The way he described it is they were congregating by the side of the road. So they were together. They must have been huddled together. They were just there minding their own business. And then suddenly this car pulls up straight to them. And as is anything involving human nature, when you're curious about something, you want to make sure that what you're seeing definitely uh, confirms what you think you're seeing and so this guy when he pulled up to the curve he wanted to observe and see what he was what he was watching so much so that he actually did so for about three minutes straight still trying to get an idea exactly of what it was like what the hell was he actually seeing with his headlights and during this time that's when he noticed that these were beings that looked to be about three or four feet tall they had the leathery skin they had the web hands they had the web feet uh, he noted that they had those large frog-like heads with the wrinkles on them so that's when he realized you know hey this is not something that should be there this is not something ordinary these are very strange creatures that I'm looking at and as he was thinking that all of a sudden one of these creatures I don't know why it did this I don't know what it was doing but the way he described it was it one of these creatures one of these frog men suddenly took out its hand what its webbed hand and he could see what he could describe as some kind of wand within it and the way he stated it's almost as if the creature was acknowledging that this man was there and it was staring at them and so he took that wand and in some way was kind of like pointing it towards the man and when that happened that's when there were some sparks that were spewing out towards the end of that wand not wanting to know exactly what that would mean or what that would cause to him the man rightfully and smartfully so decided to just leave at that point and so whatever these frogmen were about to do uh, to this man with their quote-unquote wand and whatever the sparks emitting were, I don't know, but maybe they were just trying to scare him, but it was a job well done because at that point he left. Uh, he didn't want anything to do with them otherwise, and to my knowledge and to the information I looked at, he never really encountered them again. But he, uh, whoever this anonymous businessman is, has again the distinct notion of being the first person to encounter these particular frog men. Now let's go to the next encounter. You have to go a couple of years afterward, 17 years in fact, and what makes this a notable experience is that the person that encountered uh, the next creature was actually a police officer. Um, so in some, in most cases, um, when you're dealing with a police officer, you kind of think th take things more seriously because they're not prone to making strange, fantastical tales about uh, whatever they encounter. No, they're pretty straightforward by the book. They want to make sure that what they're stating is as real as possible. So what this guy described certainly must have blown his mind. So it happened again in the dead of night, 1 a.m. This time, 17 years later, it was March 3rd, 1972. Um, this was, There was a cop, also anonymous. He decided not to have his name revealed at all, so that's the second time that this has happened where the person has decided not to reveal their name. He was traveling alongside a road called Riverside Road, also near Loveland, Ohio, and that's when he described what he saw next. Um, he said he was purposely driving slow because there was a large amount of ice on the road, so he wanted to be extra, extra careful and ensure nothing happened to him and maybe nothing happened to some of the people that he was passing by. And so that gives you the idea of the temperature and the area around his uh, surroundings too. If there was a lot of ice in a the robe, then no doubt it was definitely very wintry. So when he saw this, um, what he saw next definitely shook him. He said that as he was driving slowly, he saw what looked like a dog from a distance, what looked like a dog by the side of the curb. And then the closer that he got to it, um, he wanted to try to see... Uh, you know that he didn't collide with the with the dog he wanted to make sure the dog was okay but suddenly the closer he got to this particular dog that's when all of a sudden this creature whatever it was uh once the headlights hit it 
um, it seemed to like spring to life. I mean, all of a sudden it stood on its two legs, stared right back at the policeman. And that's when he saw, of course, that this was no dog at all. This was a frog-like creature about three to four feet tall with the leathery green skin, the large bulbous eyes, the usual frog face, everything. And there it was just staring right back at the policeman straight through the headlights. And instead of, let's say, like the previous encounter where... Um, the two of them were kind of noticing each other for several minutes. Now, in this case, this particular frog man decided um, it wasn't having it, so it just simply ran and scurried right off the cro- right aside the cross across the road, straight towards the nearest guardrail, and then disappeared straight across wherever that location was, uh, because uh, nearby there was the Ohio River. So the idea is maybe it just went right back down the embankment, uh, right beside the guardrail, and then plunged or buried itself or whatever straight into the Ohio River. So crazy encounter because here you have a police officer um, who was driving slowly so this was not a condition where let's say that they were driving 80 miles an hour and just got a brief glimpse from a distance of something as it whizzed by at like a microsecond. No, I mean he clearly had a distinct vision of it right when he pulled up to it to right when it stopped and then right when this frogman decided to pounce up and then see who this person was that crouched up upon them and so he saw a very very clear vision of this it's also important to note the surrounding again because the cold wintry weather denotes that whoever these frogmen are um, they can withstand a large amount of cold weather Um, frogs are naturally cold-blooded and so when it comes to the cold weather they tend to actually hibernate and but in this case these particular creatures even in the dead of night and very very cold weather where in this case um, this this cop was driving very slow because there was ice all around him these frog men um, were able to just essentially stay outside in this cold so this frog man itself it was defying the usual convention of a standard frog so that's the second encounter also the third encounter happened um i think it was two about two weeks later yes two weeks later we finally have the area of let's say a name uh, this was a police officer by the name of Mark Matthews who also had an encounter of his own uh, by the way one last thing about the second encounter um, there was another officer that investigated the area that the um, previous officer had with the frogman the one that went over that guardrail and they saw that on the guardrail there were the, some of the strings scratch marks on it so whether that was caused at that moment by the frogman or whether it was just previously there is kind of hard to tell but that's another thing to know but now back to the third encounter with this police officer mark matthews so we finally have a name this was the encounter that he had um he same thing pretty much as the second one he stated that as he was driving into loveland ohio so again an area near that particular city he saw what looked to be and what he thought to be like an injured animal right there on the side of the road and so wanted to take care of it and make sure that let's say if it was harmed or if it needed assistance that he was able to help it out Um, he got out of his car so he parked it got out of his car walked up straight to the actual thing because at that point he was assuming like it was a carcass of some sort that it was so badly damaged that it was already dead and this was also at the time just two weeks later that the conditions were still very cold there was a lot of ice everywhere when once again this frog man decided to jump up from its crouch position and pretty much scared the crap out of whatever the cop was expecting so much so that in this occasion this police officer mark matthews he apparently took out his gun and then shot directly at the creature and the idea is that he actually hit the creature because the creature preceded whatever this frogman was which by the way had the same characteristics same Uh, everything as far as the size, the leathery skin, the frog face, no different essentially than the other two encounters. This frog man then proceeded to hobble right over the side of the road because it was hit by the bullet, but it did it in a way where it was actually watching the officer the entire way because it wanted to make sure. It almost seemed like it was like in in an annoyed expression that, hey, I can't believe this guy just actually shot me. Like that seems to be 
the actual uh, notion that I got when I was reading this information. So it hobbled over to the side of the road, stepped over the guardrail, and then that was it. It disappeared thereafter once it went over the guardrail. But it was fascinating to read that information because it certainly seemed like the frogman was not expecting this. Um, like when it got up from its crop position, the last thing it was expecting was for it to be shot or harmed in some way. And it's interesting to note that too because with its annoyed expression, it seemed like um, you had this creature that could have actually attacked at this point or could have done something in terms of retaliation but no it didn't it just pretty much just stared and gave the evil eye to the officer and then that was it um, it went over the guardrail didn't attack it just peacefully uh, went away and that's been noted as the last encounter of anything involving these frog men or frog man altogether What's interesting to note, though, is that this Officer Matthews, um, over the years, apparently he has gone back on his tail um, as far as what he encountered. There was an email he gave back in 2001, an email interview, where he says everything that people say about my encounter over the years has just been, as he put it, habitually blown out of proportion. Um, here's what he said. In fact, he stated, it was and is no monster. It was not leathery or had wet matted fur. It was not three to five feet tall. It did not stand erect. The animal I saw was obviously some type of lizard that someone had as a pet. They either got too large for its aquarium, escaped by accident, or they simply got tired of it. It was less than three feet in length, ran across the road, and was probably blinded by my headlights. It presented no aggressive action. Still, um, it's kind of hard to dispute like why he would shoot it. People surmised that uh, apparently he tried to shoot the creature to to, I don't know, seem macho or to seem like he was on the attack rather than have something get the surprise of him. I don't know if someone could provide a better explanation, that'd be good to hear. But otherwise, it's it's fascinating to know that he was um, essentially rescinding on what his encounter was before. Um, who knows, maybe he gave all this information correctly at the beginning. But you know how people are, how they embellish things whenever they tell one thing to another and then that person tells another person and so forth and it just grows a life of its own by that point so there's a chance that that could have happened too so that's it the loveland frogman the three known encounters that to this day continue to have a pretty popular item um, within the cryptid world uh, again very very massively suggested in the past it was good that I finally got around to it it is some fascinating information um, if, if these creatures are truly out there in the US it's great to hear that um, that that to this day like they still have a fan base of some sort and again uh, with regards to their scarcity they've done a really really good job of staying away from any population uh, population from any civilization so the idea that they're somewhere out there but they're able to successfully live on their own that's also pretty neat to hear and then as far as what kind of thing they were doing with that wand in their hand who knows but it kind of denotes that they could have something else, like some other technology that they have uh, that they were going to do on that poor businessman, but they just didn't have a chance to do so. So that's another interesting aspect, too. There may even be the chance that with their characteristics, uh, how they look, they may even not actually be cryptid related, that they could be more uh, something along the lines of UFOs, aliens, um, with their green skin, with their height kind of matching what the grays would be large bulbous eyes. It'd be interesting to see if truly if they were actually um, just something from another world and that's why you haven't seen them in so so long. So as I said earlier in the beginning of the video if anyone has any more information about the Loveland Frogs especially uh, any more encounters more recent encounters that would be great to hear too. So alright everybody thanks again as always take care.